Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're putting a stereo in Silver Bullet. Uh, we're doing all this other work to the truck, so why not have a killer radio in it too? This is a pretty inexpensive setup that anybody can do. We're gonna show you the process, start to finish, what it takes to uh, change the head unit out, put a sub in it, and uh, just kind of make the whole thing a little bit better. Kevin from Davis Builders is on his way over here, but before we start on that and while I'm waiting on him, I figure I'll walk around here, show you guys some of the parts we've already got prepped and ready for paint. And um, yeah, this thing goes in the paint booth tomorrow, the next day. And uh, the build's gonna go pretty quick from here, guys. So you'll see this thing completed real soon. All right, so for starters, fifth wheel, we got the, the top plate off of it and all the grinding and the edges and all that stuff have been completed. So it's all nice and smooth around all its edges. Um, still need to do a quick sand over all the paint before we paint that. So I guess we'll probably do that tomorrow uh, before it goes in the booth. Deck plate, getting it all prepped and ready to go to paint. This is the backside of the deck plate between the sleeper and the fifth wheel. And then from the fifth wheel to the end, that's that part of the deck plate. Still got to sand it a little bit before we paint it. Um, there's your airline box here. Uh, I think we're actually going to do the airline box silver. And then, so inside is going to be silver. And then the whole deck plate itself will be the air gas blue, like the frame. Cab sleeper panels sanded and ready to go. Um, we've got to prep the window chops to paint those. Visor. So visor is going to stay shiny. We're going we're gonna to leave it polished. But on the inside of the visor, we'll sand all this area right here real good. And we're going to put that air gas blue paint behind the visor. Probably put uh, probably put the truck's name here. We'll put Silver Bullet in the visor so you can kind of see it going down the road. That way you don't forget what the name of the truck is, you know. Because that might ever happen. Probably not. There's your little brackets for that dude. Uh, fuel tank brackets. We got them all sanded and they'll get painted. Those are your fender brackets. Those get painted. Um, what else we got over here? We got some other stuff. Uh, Peterbilt doors. I don't know what they're there for. Uh, bumper brackets. So this is the bumper lift kit brackets. Um, basically, they went in, sanded all these, got these prepped, so um, they'll be ready to paint. And haven't really worked on the Kenworth much yet because, um, well, we've been trying to get the Peterbilt knocked out. So. Um, Imagine we'll probably come back to this thing in a couple of days. But we've also got another truck coming in the shop uh, in the next couple of days too. That's a pretty crazy build and you guys will get to see that soon. But anyway, that's probably enough rambling on that. Let's put a radio in this thing. All right, guys. Kevin made it. Yep. Oh, a couple hour drive, right? No, yeah, about four. About four hours. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin's brought some 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 cool audio stuff fixing to show you that. How long do you think it'll take us to do the install on this gig? Uh, a few hours. A few hours. Not not too terrible bad. Not too bad. It's, you, it's and you've done a you've done a install. few. Yeah, we, you've done we've a few. done a few Peter Mills, yeah. <laughs> if you guys don't know, there's a video coming real soon. We go back up to Davis Brothers to check out Cash Money. Um, they've got a truck up there with like 10 gazillion watts in it. I'm pretty sure that like if you were to plug that thing into a wall, it would make a city shut down. Like, it just pulls that much power. That thing's got, like, 40 subs in it or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, 70 speakers. 70. Just 70 speakers in the truck. It's a concert. I mean, it's, it rolls on the road. It's a concert. These dudes know a thing or two about stereos. We might be doing something a little mundane here compared to what his normal stuff would be. But still, 600-watt upgrade in a 389 is going to be pretty awesome. You want to get yeah. started? Sure. All right, let's do it. What do we, what do we, what do we got here? Well, we've got a JL-powered... 10. So it's all one compact unit. It's got a 400 watt amplifier in it that runs that 10 inch ported sub. Yep. Um, then we've got a Sony head unit that's 4x50 RMS. So max, it's 400 watts. So we're going to do actually about an 800 watt upgrade on this Peterbilt. We're going to put the sub in place of the old sub in the sleeper so yep. that we'll kind of conserve space. The head unit's going to go right in the factory spot run a few wires back there. It's a relatively easy install and it'll be a huge sound upgrade. Awesome, so there you guys go. I uh, actually said it wrong. I said 600 watts and even better, we're gonna have 800. But I mean, I guess technically it is 600 watts because it 600 it's RMS. Yeah, it's RMS. RMS. I hate doing max. RMS, it's 600, you're yeah. right. And, and RMS, guys, is uh, 
that just means that's what it always will be. Continuous. And if it needs a little extra punch, it could, it's got like a it's got an extra 200 watts there if it needs to get to it. Okay, right, guys. So basically, what we've done now is we've taken the screws out, pulled this panel out here. Kevin had a little tool that goes in the sides. He's like two little holes there. Pulls the makes the radio go loose. Then we'll unplug all of this stuff. And then what do we do from there? We put the other radio in? Yep. Okay. Yep, we've got a new can that'll fit right in this hole. You bend the tabs out. And these new trucks kind of something different. They've started putting a different adapter on, like what you would see in cars and pickups yep. out on the road. That's your antenna. That's then that then you can pull this off and the regular antenna plugs right in. So oh, it's that's actually kinda nice. handy. Yeah. And then this is your Bluetooth mic, which I will actually integrate this into the microphone that'll come off the back of the radio mm -hmm. so you'll actually still use that factory bluetooth mic so it'll all look factory it all looks factory and all works like factory right, just absolutely. sounds better you'll sound a lot better you'll like it these are always fun sometimes <laughs> <laughs> well, they make sure they don't like, come loose i mean the worst yeah. thing is go down the road and your yeah. radio yeah. harness goes loose and you're in and out of music <laughs> And so if you guys are ever doing a radio in your truck, you can actually buy a, a harness right here. And that harness plugs directly into your factory side. So we, I already had this pre-wired, but you plug this in and then you plug your radio right into it. Yep. Then this is the lead that will actually turn on that sub that's going to be in the back. And then so we'll have our, RCAs. Which is your, that would be, this would be your remote wire. Remote turn which on. Basically turn, yep, turns the mm -hmm. thing on. But that makes it real nice because you get those dudes that come with directions on what wires go where. Plugs right in. You don't touch anything with your factory harness and you can put a radio in. Who makes that part? Um, there's several different companies make that. But uh, actually, believe it or not, it's an old Volkswagen harness I found. Is it really? <laughs> it come out of a early 2000s Volkswagen. That's wild. It, it's crazy. And it works on Kenworth and Peterbilt. And Peterbilt. So what Volkswagen is that? Uh, now Ken like, is like, I don't know. Well, any regular Volkswagen, I think I've actually got a picture of that part number, but it took a lot of research to find it. <laughs> I imagine a, so. It's an older Volkswagen piece. It's kind of unique that it that it actually worked. And we figured that out. I was like, wow. So now you don't have to cut any wires. Any wires, that's awesome. Just like going down to your local stereo shop and having a radio put in your car. There's no wire cutting. Yep, so you can go You can go online, you can find this dude, you can wire it up, super simple. Guys, we'll actually try to look up that. I'll, if you look down in the description, I'll put the uh, the information on how you can get this harness to hook up your you know, radio if you want to do an aftermarket and not touch the wiring harness in a 389. I think the world will love you for that. Oh, probably so. There's At least all kinds of people that. been finding it, but I do. When people inquire about it, I do let them know what it is. Okay. Because I know we're not going to go all over the country putting in radios and a subwoofer. Right. You know, but we like being able to help people too. Yeah. Awesome. Another fun thing we'll show you guys since we're all on this wiring. There's a lot of gauges, and if you guys ever wired up a hot rod or something, there's all kind of wires you're plugging into all those little gauges and stuff, and you know you get this whole panel. And you've got, you know, what you would uh, appear to be a whole lot of wires. But flip the dude around and there's one plug. Well, two plugs, right? Right. Two plugs. There's one plug goes into the main information center. And then these little jumpers all connect all these gauges by a CAN bus system, which a lot of cars are using a CAN bus system now. It's four wires and it the computer literally reads the gauges where they are. There's an A and a B system. The A system works off of this cluster here. And there's one four pin plug that plugs into it. Yep. Then there's another B that feeds all this. And then you just jump them around. You could put this gauge over here, this gauge over here, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It knows which gauge is which through right. the computer system. That's pretty awesome. So it's very simple. So if you guys are ever like real worried about taking your dash out and all the wires, um, well, you know, be real worried because there's all those wires that plug into that dude. It's, it's brutal. Yeah, terrible absolutely horrible now everybody's gonna think that all this is really easy now but <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's not Our super simple it's not super simple but it's not as simplistic. daunting it's, it's it's not nearly as daunting as what it it, it appears could, could appear right yeah we got the dash all part and ready to put the radio in we've got to run the rcas and the remote wire back to where the sub's going to be under the bed here in the sleeper um so kevin's just taking all these panels out real quick so that we can Run the wires, make it nice and clean. You'll never see anything. Yeah, you'll never know we've made a change except for when you turn it on. <laughs> and that's all. That's all they want to know anyway, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah.
not everyone wants to have to dig into all the gory details of it as far as what all had to take place. They just want to know that their truck's right when they pick it up. Exactly. All right, so, oh. so we got the panel back in place. All the wires are all plugged in back there and we kind of showed you guys the harness and stuff. So Kevin's run the RCAs, which are right here. And again, those you can see over here in this panel, they run up this way and back over to the back of the, coming down this corner and then we'll finish running them back under the bed. Um, and then that's your, what are all these things? So that's your factory This plug. is This is where I integrated that mic to okay. hook into your factory Bluetooth mic. This plug goes into the radio. This box is a Sirius XM box. When you put a radio in that's Sirius XM ready in a truck that has the antenna, you have to add this additional about $60 module that hooks into your antenna and then your radio, any Sirius XM radio out there uh, will control these boxes. Yep. And that is your tuner for your Sirius XM. Yep. So basically guys, everything stayed stock appearing other than the radio going in, we're using everything that's from the factory, from Peterbilt behind the dash and all the wiring for Sirius XM, your regular radio antenna, um, all that stays completely normal. And again, we didn't, um, we didn't really alter anything on the, on the actual factory deal, except for this dude. And that's for the, that's for your, your microphone that goes up over yeah. here. Most um, guys don't use them. I know they use earpieces, but we just, I would rather not have an extra microphone hanging out. I'd it would, it, it looks a lot better keeping a factory right. for sure. So, all right, cool. Let's put the radio in then. All right. Let's go down here. This RCA goes into the subwoofer. I'm a little bit blind. So you want your light? Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> And left and right doesn't matter on subwoofer. Then your mic goes right into here. And then your Sirius XM connector goes, oh, let me get it around the other side of this dude. Goes right into there. Clicks into place. And we get the actual antenna, plug it into here. Uh, maybe not so much there's so much back there you got to get the wires just right so you've got enough room uh so everything kind of pushes in place you have added a little bit of yeah you know with the xm box and everything there we go now it's all in Man. and this one's pretty neat because a lot of times guys these will have a trim ring on them you got to put on after the fact but this radio has actually got the trim ring built into it so that's pretty nice and then here's the Face plate for it. There's your USB. Obviously, it's time for another round. I mean, it's lunch break, I guess. <laughs> lunch break. But then here's your auxiliary cord, so you can access all that right from the front. Clicks in real nice and easy, and that's something you can remove to deter people from wanting to steal the thing. That's a theft deterrence, what that's intended for. Cool. All right, I guess now we're going to put the rest of these panels back in and then uh, move on to putting the sub in? Yep. Sweet. Yep, we're ready. All right, cool. All right, guys, so the radio's in. We haven't actually turned it on, Kevin, to even see if it works. Nah, it'll work. It's going to work. <laughs> it's going to work. It's going to work. So now we're going to put the sub down in here and um, take that old sub box out. So um, what do we need to do? You need some tools? Yeah, yeah. Get we'll a screw gun, light, and we'll start pulling her apart. All right, let's do it. All right, so the bed's flipped up. Kevin's in there looking around. This dude comes out pretty easy. There's two screws here on that rack where he's at. And then I'll remove two over here. And uh, stereo just kind of plugs in. It's got factory plugs in it just like they do. And There's it, the massive factory speaker. Yeah, there's your wimpy little 8-inch sub. I mean, for... No, it's actually a 6. It's a 6-inch sub. Yeah. Okay. They do decent. They do decent. And they, they really do. Here, I grab those. Okay. They do sound. They do sound good from the factory. It's definitely better than without it, but this oh, new stereo sure. is going to be way better. Okay, so sub is loose. I'm going to carry this around and show you guys the difference between yeah. what. There we go. Show you the difference between this dude. There's a significant difference visually. Anyway, there you go. 
factory sub, new JO Audio 400 watt 10 inch sub. So I should probably also grab this dude, put him in the truck because that goes to the radio. So now that we got the, the factory sub is out of here. What Kevin's done is we've we put a small hole in the floor right here with a with a with a grommet. Our power wire is going to come up through uh, from the batteries under the driver's side box there, and they'll come up through this hole and into the speaker box because it's a self-powered sub, so the amp and everything's inside that speaker box. Um, and then we'll use our ground for that guy. If you can see right back there, um, there's your factory chassis ground for inside, and uh, you know it's right close to where the sub's going, so that makes it super easy. And it's a good size power cable too to run everything efficiently. I'll go down below and grab it. Ugh. All right. And what we'll do, guys, is this comes when we run this through, we'll run up under here and we'll secure it uh, to these cross members until we get down over here and hook it to the battery. And right there where the battery goes, we'll be putting an a inline fuse. And uh, pretty simple process. Not too terribly time consuming either. I think we got plenty, Kevin. All right, so Kevin's got the sub in here, power wire. I've run that down to where the battery goes. So comes out right here, stays nice and tight, zip tied out of the way. Biggest thing when you're doing this guys too, is just make sure you run these wires where they're not gonna find a place to just constantly get rubbed on like metal or something. Cause eventually it'll chafe and uh, cause it to ground out and and you'll be like, my sub doesn't work and I don't know why. So all that's kind of tucked in real nice and neat. And I've made sure to keep it away from anything that's gonna be you know, chafing those wires that comes out of the factory grommet right here. And there you go. Then what we'll end up doing is hooking it to this inline fuse here, that guy, and then pause the side on the battery terminal. A little bit of silicone. So Kevin's putting some silicone in the grommet, just keep everything nice and airtight. Another cool thing that he just did, I never really thought about before, but after watching him, really smart idea, you guys can see, he put a zip tie, oh, the light's better, put a zip tie on top of this dude so it'll never pull through too far, keeps it in place, and then, you know, the silicone in there, and just kind of ensures it's nice and sealed off the right way. Now we slide the sub in there. Yeah, we're ready to get her in place and wire it up. And we're actually gonna be using the factory uh, mounting L bracket here and uh, to secure the sub back down to the floor so it doesn't ever move around a rock. And as like you're saying, guys, so it's got a built-in amplifier. Um, super simple to wire up. And uh, you can even pull this out, get everything all nice and neat. And it's just a one plug kind of a thing. One plug deal, put the RCA, RCAs into here and then we'll be. So if you yeah. wanted to take the sub out because you needed the space for some random reason, it's right. literally just unplug two RCAs and that right there and you can pull the sub out. Yep, very, very easy to remove if you needed the extra space for whatever reason. All right guys, so there it is. It is all wired up and that little green light means it's go time. We can turn this thing up and listen to it. You can kind of see Kevin done a real good job, put everything together. Here's your plug we were talking about. It's got your power at the bottom of the red, your white's ground and your blue is your remote wire. And then your two RCAs right there. You obviously you can do your adjustments over here for your sub to however you like it also on the radio but we'll quit talking about it and uh i'm gonna hop in on the other side and let's crank this thing up let's do it yeah the radio's in the subs in the back yep we're let's ready see, let's see what it sounds like all right let's do it <laughs> Just changing out to this radio puts more power to uh, the factory speakers, which is, and it's a cleaner source of, of music. It just, uh, it's got a better yeah. processor in it. Yes, it's, there's a, a 10 band EQ in this radio. So uh, to explain that in a little bit more simple terms, most radios have bass and treble, and that's two ends of, the, of what you hear. Bass is the low stuff, treble's the high stuff. So with a 10 band EQ, there's 10 different areas between there that you can adjust 
so you can really make the sound just the way you want it. And you can really bring a factory speaker to life without having to put amplifiers in necessarily. Right. For an everyday work truck, this is a perfect setup. Yeah, it sounds it sounds so much better than a factory uh, system does. And we'll go back here. I'll show you guys the sub here. Ugh. We obviously need to clean up our mess a little bit. But um, there's your sub. Dinner bell just went off in the shop. I guess we can go eat, Kevin. Yeah. But simple 10 inch, 400 watts. And uh, I mean, when you turn this thing up, it sounds good. Now you can get back there and actually. I like it. Way big difference. I like it a lot. And every, all the power cable and everything is fused right in the battery box. So the vehicle is protected and then the amplifier in the subwoofer is protected too. So everything's done to, to standards to where if there's ever a short, it's all protected. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Man. It sounds so good and so much cleaner. Oh, very much so. Guys, check it out. If you want to do this in your truck, it's not it's not real hard to do. It takes a little bit of time. Obviously, Kevin's done it a lot, so he's pretty quick with it. If you're doing it your first time, you may have a little more time and effort into it. But, I mean, all in all, I think the two of us got this knocked out in three hours. Yeah, or less. Yeah, it might be yeah. a little bit less than that. If and you're this interested, is your first time I've ever... Yeah, trying never, to do this in one of these trucks right. for sure i mean it's a great way to upgrade your stereo i mean we got 600 watts now it sounds awesome and it's relatively inexpensive in the in the audio world as an entry level right. really good sounding system mm -hmm. so um i don't think there's anything else left to really talk about we can't drive it because there's still no fuel tanks on this thing. So and there's only two tires on the back. Yeah, there's only two tires on the back. <laughs> we might be able so. to do some donuts. We had fuel. Yeah, <laughs> guys, go down, like, subscribe, uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Semi Casual Show. And if you want to see all the parts and stuff that we did here, uh, that's in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe somebody out there is going to put a stereo system in their truck now. And uh, if you all have any other questions too, you can always hit up the guys at Davis Brothers. Super knowledgeable about stereos and all things custom with semi trucks, anyhow. Till next time. Thanks, see ya. Guys.